it's time I finally talk about my pregnancy and birthing of Rubel. I've been meaning to do this for years now, and I just couldn't find a way to talk about it. So I'm just gonna jump in and talk about it. Now let's be frank, Rubel was a surprise. <laughs> The stars aligned because the forces of the universe, or God, or whatever you believe, decided Rubel was going to begin his life before we were quote unquote ready. Because our original plan was to begin trying for a kid in 2018, so Rubel just came a little early, I suppose. Plus, it would not have been the Rubel we'd know today. Anyways, surprise the heck out of me, surprise the heck out of our snake, Perrin too. She was not going to be our baby anymore, and she got demoted. Oh, the poor, poor snake. So pregnancy was... A pregnancy. Started out fine for like 10 weeks. Felt great. Was eating fine. Was just carrying on my day. Until one day, everything changed. I was going in for an ultrasound, so I had to drink a butt ton of water. But before I went into the ultrasound clinic, I had to go to the bank to deposit some money. And as I'm depositing money, a feeling comes over. And my saliva begins thinning and increasing. And my stomach feels weird. Oh, please, this better not be what I think it is. Oh gosh, yes it is. I can't find the bathroom. Ah. I am so sorry, little garbage can. <laughs> there went all the water I had to drink for the ultrasound. Hey, excuse me. I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thankfully, explaining you're pregnant gives people just a tiny bit of sympathy. Those poor bank attendants. And then after that incident, uh, I was basically sick the whole time I was pregnant. Like, this was worse than a morning sickness, because any time I would try to eat or drink, I would throw up. So I needed pills to just live, because, you know, food and water is important when you're growing a human. And apparently Rubel was like, nah, mom, you, you don't need that. So yeah, I was basically on medication for two-thirds of my pregnancy. And you know how they talk about cravings? Nah, man, before I got cravings, I had aversion. And Rubel decided I was gonna go two months of being forced to be a vegetarian because the smell of meat would make me hurl. Red and dairy, you are my saving grace right now. Beef was the worst, especially taco beef. And chicken, bacon, and seafood were okay. Maybe I had aversions for them for a few weeks, but taco beef, like seriously, one smell of that and I was gone. But I did have some cravings after my aversions were over. I craved oranges, cheese whiz on toast, and the smell of blue wiper fluid. And just to make sure nobody gets this wrong, I only crave the smell of the fluid. I never had a desire to taste or drink the fluid, only smelling it. My mom used to crave the smell of gasoline when she was pregnant with my youngest brother and we used to joke that all those fumes were the reason he was who he was. So um, if uh, Rubel grows up to be a bit of an oddball, uh, we can blame the wiper fluid for that. Oh, and I lost weight. Like, it's no secret that I'm fat, but I think anyone would be concerned when you're expecting to gain weight, but you're losing weight. But hey, turns out, as long as your baby is growing normally, and you're doing everything to be healthy, it's okay to lose some weight at the beginning. And Rubel reduced my weight by 30 pounds. That is the best weight loss plan I've ever been on. Results not guaranteed. Please don't actually rely on a pregnancy to lose weight. It will guarantee be the absolute opposite of what you're looking for. So now we get into the day when things got serious. So I'm already on mat leave because I decided, why not? And Robin leaves for work. And then I get a period cramp, which I hadn't felt for like nine months. And they began getting regular, but like they didn't hurt like I expected them to be. It just felt like a cramp. So... I told Robin to come home, because I was like, hey, I don't know what's going on, but let's go to the hospital. He's like, okay. And I did confirm that I was actually in early labor, because I was two centimeters dilated, but it just wasn't dilated enough to get me admitted to the hospital, so they kicked us out. So we wait around while I deal with the contractions, and then things start getting a little bit more crampy during the night, so we decided to go back to the hospital again, but I was only three centimeters dilated, so I got kicked out again. We decided to try and sleep that night, which was a roller coaster. Rubble decided, hey, I'm gonna get my mom into real labor during the middle of the night while she's dreaming. That is me hotties. Steady crew. We're nearly out to the storm. Ah! My contraction would wake me up in the night. I would just deal with that for about a minute. And then I would fall back asleep and have the same dream. Then it would happen again. Fall back asleep. 
have the same dream, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat for a good hour or two. So now I'm into the real painful stuff. Like, my water didn't break, so we were debating if we should even go back to the hospital because we're like, we don't want to get kicked out again. But when you're at the point where each contraction you begin to almost cry and scream because you're in so much pain, it kind of decided it for us. Now, my labor may not have been as painful if it weren't for Rubel's positioning. He was what is called posterior. So normally babies will be head down, maybe facing your spine. But Rubel was head down and facing forwards, which caused my back muscles to engage with my labor, and uh, your back muscles are not designed to contract, so it causes a lot of unnecessary pain. But thankfully, I was four centimeters dilated, so they're like, congratulations, you've been accepted to the hospital, let's get you into a really fancy bed. This bed turned into a chair, and Robin had a really fancy chair too. And then the anesthesiologist was like, do you want an epidural? Yes, please! I have no shame in saying that I got an epidural. I wanted to be comfortable for just a couple hours, because the rest of my life was not going to be comfortable. I'm just kidding, Rubel. If you see this in the future, my life was not uncomfortable. It's just a joke. Hit me with the good stuff, Doc. Oh, yeah. Actually, before the epidural worked its magic, I had to get an IV. So two nurses come in and I was told that I would have a nursing student along with me. And they asked me if the student could try putting the IV in. And I remember when I used to live with Lola, her ranting about how some people wouldn't let nursing students practice on them. So I decided I would let her. Mind you though, I don't have great veins for IVs. They're hard to see, they're super tough, and they tend to move around, plus it hurts. So this poor student's struggling to put an IV in me while I'm trying not to cry, and she tries for about five minutes before having to give up and let the supervising nurse put it in me. And I wasn't upset with the student. I know she needs the practice and to learn how to put IVs in people with terrible veins like mine. And then I look at Robin, who has naturally protruding veins, and the supervising nurse just says to the student, now if he was getting an IV, you would have had a great time. See, Robin has this uncanny ability to attract nurses to his protruding veins and get creepy comments like, hmm, I'd love to to put an IV in your arm. Could you just like not? And it was at the hospital where Robin and I made the and a very important decision. It's time to tell our parents that we're having a baby. So here's the different dynamic between Robin's parents and my parents when it came to telling them that we're in the hospital and having a baby. Hey mom and dad, just letting you know that we're in the hospital. Alyssa's in labor. Okay, cool, just keep us updated. Alright, good luck. Hope everything goes well. My parents. Uh, hey mom and dad, just letting you know that Alyssa's in the hospital- Maybe I exaggerated just a tiny bit for my mom, but I'm pretty sure she was thinking that when we phoned her to tell her that her first grandchild's coming. But seriously, her first grandchild's gonna be born, like, at any time? Really? Is she just wants to see her grandchild? But they lived a two hour drive away, so... My brother and my cousin, because my cousin just happened to be over that day, decided, hey, let's take this wonderful opportunity to film mom having a mini freak out trying to rush my family to finish their supper so they can go. By their screaming, yeah. coming from somewhere. Oh, 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 no. no. You're, you're yeah. talking with a raised voice. Just oh, call us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My mom, can you hold out your hand like this? I'm not shaking. Think about how much times this is gonna happen. This is only the first time. <laughs> when did you get to call that Alyssa was in oh, labor? Like five fifteen. Five fifteen thirty-two seconds. So she could have her baby right now. And they made it before visiting time was closed by mere minutes. Is the baby here? No, not yet. Ugh, we're going to a hotel. Bye. And then shortly after they leave, I get a weird feeling. Hey, um, Robin? I might need to push. So I flagged down a nurse and they checked me and boom, I was 10 centimeters dilated. Oh, wow, you're ready. Just don't push. Wait, don't push. But I, I need to push. I, I, I can't not push. I can't just hold it in. I began panicking. Listen, calm down. Just chill. You're okay. People rush in, my bed gets turned to a chair, haha, -ha, and I'm propped up for pushing. Can't believe I just said that. Robin witnessed my face going really purple for those few minutes, and uh, Robin, like the freaking champ that he is, saw everything. 
Like, I can't even deal with watching videos of women give birth without almost gagging. And yet here he is watching his own child's head just come out of there. Just like, everything's fine. And it's fine. And then, boom. Child's born. Everything's fine. They get him all dried up. Suck out the fluid out of his mouth and nose, whatever. And he is, you know, not too happy that his warm and cozy home is uh, gone and he's in this freezing cold environment. And then I go to pick him up and he poops on me. Thanks, bud. Go through all nine months of not so great pregnancy for you to poop on me. Still love you, bud, but really? And Robin cried happy tears. And don't let Robin tell you otherwise. He claimed he didn't cry, but I saw him cry. He was crying happy tears. And there he was, a tiny person who surprises all. And look at him now.